Hello, sisters gathered around the world. My name is Sandy Wisdom Martin. I serve with Women's Missionary Union in the United States. And I want to share some of my reflections on prayer. Last fall, I was asked to do a devotional on prayer. And I sat at my computer trying to write something that would make sense. And the words wouldn't come, only tears. I made the mistake of trying to recall my earliest profound prayer experiences. When I was six, my younger sister was born. She didn't have enough hemoglobin in her blood and it caused many health complications. We went to a tiny church of about 25 people. There was another family in the church with a young daughter who had cancer. When my sister Pam was about four or five, I remember our church taking offerings to help with medical bills and holding round-the-clock prayer vigils for Pam and Valerie, the other little girl. My sister lived, but Valerie died. You can't imagine the conflicting thoughts that descended upon 11-year-old me. I couldn't define it at the time, but there was almost a survivor's guilt. My sister's life was spared. My family came through the crisis. Valerie did not, nor did her family. Lives were shattered. And in the infancy of my faith at age 11, I asked why prayer worked for my family and not Valerie's family, because that's what it felt like to me as a child. Why did prayer work for us? Fast forward four and a half decades later, at a time when I should be mature in my faith, I still struggle with that same issue. A year ago, January, I wrote about the passing of friends in 2020. And as soon as I sent the article, my dear friend Beth sent a text about her husband that said, we need a miracle, Rex can't breathe. Pray that God would breathe his healing power into his lungs. And I said to a colleague of mine, I'm embarrassed to say this, but my faith is faltering. I lost so many friends in 2020. The next Sunday morning, the altar call was, take it to the Lord in prayer. And I reached down and turned my phone back on as we were singing. And I saw a text from Beth that said, we're turning off life support at 1230. He will be healed in glory. And the overwhelming grief that gripped my heart was almost unbearable. Do I believe God hears the prayers of his people? Absolutely. I honestly do. And I wholeheartedly believe in miracles. I used to keep a running list of miracles that could only happen by the hand of God. But I stopped adding to the list a long time ago in the midst of the crush of day-to-day -day activities. And I forgot to live in expectation of seeing his miracles on a regular basis. My experiences with prayer have been paradoxical, seemingly contradictory, filled with incredible hope and anticipation and joy, but also with great lament and sadness and pain and anguish. When I was studying in seminary, Jim McKinley a missionary to Bangladesh was a guest lecturer in one of my classes. And he shared experiences about his family being bunkered underneath stairs in their home while bombs exploded all around them in Bangladesh during a war. He said, we didn't pray for the bombs not to hit our home because we wouldn't want them to hit our neighbor's homes either. Jim said, we simply prayed that God would be with us, and he was. God with us. The day before my daughter's fourth birthday, we buried her two-year-old cousin, and I watched my family try to cope at the funeral. When my brother helped carry the tiny casket from the church, I thought my heart would break in half. It's not right for parents and grandparents to bury children. But from the words of the minister, I took comfort. He told us that Oakley was in the presence of the Father, 
He reminded us of the pain that Oakley endured every day of his life, and since his death, Oakley had been pain-free, and I took strength from the words spoken by the minister at the funeral as he shared from the Bible. Those words of comfort sustained my family during a very difficult time. I'm reminded of the story of Jarius and his daughter in the fifth chapter of Mark. Can you imagine Jarius' pain as he pleaded with Jesus while his daughter lay seriously ill at home in bed? He, like any parent, would do anything for his child. There's no worse pain on this earth than watching a child suffer and die. Then Jarius' tears of sorrow were replaced with tears of joy as Jesus raised the child from the dead. Can you imagine the hugging and sobbing that took place in Jarius' home that day? Why would I use an illustration about one child living while another one died? Because to me, the power of both stories is the presence of Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus walked with Jairus' family in their darkest hour, just as he walked with my family. And one day, our rejoicing will be just as grace as Jairus's when we witness Oakley's resurrection in heaven. God is with us in our deepest sorrows, as well as our greatest joys. If you're in the midst of pain and sorrow today, Ask God to hold you in his arms and comfort you. And if there is reason to celebrate and rejoice, then thank God for that as well. In my office hangs a print of this painting of an old, old weathered church. Let me see if I can show it to you without too much reflection from the glass. Can you see it? I love this old weathered church. The artist called it, The Faith Still Stands. The painting was done by one of our missionaries, John Lewis. John was a palliative care chaplain. His wife, Diana, served as a church and community ministries missionary. And Diana remembers vividly the day thousands were praying for them as our featured missionaries. John had just been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and hospital tests revealed on that day, the day that they were featured as our missionaries, that John had extensive cancer. And I just knew God was going to use this to heal John. Thousands were praying. God would heal John and reveal his glory to the world. And John died just three months later. Diana says it was really hard sitting in the hospital waiting on results. But we had extra strength because we knew so many people were praying for us. Cards and notes and letters came in the mail, enough to fill two large boxes. Diana says, I would read the cards as I sat by John's bed those three months. And I remember one bundle of cards sent by children. The message of one said something like this, don't worry about tomorrow, strength for today is all you need. And she said that card was just what I needed because that's how I had to live my life. She said, I read that card every day when John was sick. And it reminded me when I got weary, I wouldn't have to worry about what would come next. I just needed strength for the day. Diana still believes in prayer. She says, don't give up on praying, even though it's something we can't see. We live by faith and not by sight. She says to pray for the lost and missionaries you'll never meet in this world is critical. Those prayers strengthen and encourage others. For myself, I believe I have many more questions about this faith journey than when I was a child. But if I could go back in time, I think I would tell an 11-year-old me that no matter what happens in life, your faith still stands. Hold on to it with everything you got, and God will be with you no matter what. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. The faith still stands, and God is with us. Please pray with me. 
Father, it's easy to see chaos and devastation around us and to feel disappointments. But Father, we know we can face the future with confidence because you are who you say you are. You are our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, our deliverer. Give us strength to hold on to you with everything we've got. The faith still stands and we know you will be with us no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen.